Hello, guys. It's your best old guy, Raiden Fairby, a.k.a. Bobby Raiden here. Welcome back to another Storytime video. Today's book on Storytime with Bobby Raiden Fairby is Take Care, Good Night. And yes, this is a Dollywood Parton book I got in my, in the mail when I was younger. See, it's a Dollywood Parton book. You can't really see my name in my mom's name because of how blurry it is. But let's get started on the story. Take care, good night. Once there were three little dragons. The dragons lived in a deep, dark cave that was in the king's forest. But the dragons were very happy in their cave. They had a good friend. He was called the Good Knight. Every day he rode his horse, clippity clop, clippity clop, to the dragon's cave to say, Good morning, good dragons. Good morning, good night, replied the dragons. And every night he rode to his, I mean, and every night he rode his horse, clippity clop, clippity clop, to put the little dragons to bed. Good night, good night, the dragon said before they went to sleep. One day after the good night had ridden off his horse, clippity clop, clippity clop, the dragons heard a knock on the door. It was another friend, the old, old wizard. Good day, little dragons. I was wondering if you could help me, the old, old wizard said. We will try, said the dragons. I would like you to watch my cats while I go away for a few days. Can you do it? I hope they can do it. The dragons had never watched cats before, but the good knight had taught them that it was a good idea to do good deeds. Certainly, we will help you, said the dragons. The old, old wizard was very happy. He told the dragons that he would leave a note with the instructions at his cottage. He left them the shiny silver key to his door. Take care, good dragons, he said, and then he disappeared in a puff of smoke. This is going to be fun, said the first dragon. I can hardly wait, said the second dragon. Yippee, said the third dragon. The next day, the dragons went to the wizard's cottage to take care of the cats. They opened the door with the shiny silver key. They saw a lot of cats. They found the wizard's note on the counter. There was only one problem. The dragons didn't know how to read. I think the first thing we're supposed to do is take the cats swimming in the lake, said the first dragon. So the dragons gathered up the cats and took them to the lake for a swim. Just then, the good knight was riding on his horse. Good day, good dragons, said the good knight. What are you doing? We are taking the wizard's cats for a swim, said the dragons he told us to. Cat swimming? That did not seem right. But if the old wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. But the cats did not swim, like swimming. They did not like it one bit. They howled and yelped. They quivered and shivered until the little dragons took them home. Then the little dragons looked at the wizard's note to see what to do next. I think it says to put the cats in the cupboard said the second dragon. So the dragons put the cats in the cupboard. Just then the good knight was riding by. What are you doing? asked the good knight. We are putting the wizard's cats in the cupboard. He told us to. 
cats in the cupboard? That did not seem right. But if the old wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. But the cats did not like being in the cupboard. They did not like it one bit. They scratched and scratched until the little dragons let them out. By then, the cats were very thirsty and very hungry, and so were the little dragons, but they looked at the note once more. I think now we are supposed to take the cats camping, said the third dragon. So the dragons took the cats out camping under the stars. What are you doing? asked the good knight who was coming to bring the dragons back to their cave. We are taking the cats out camping, said the dragons. The old wizard told us to. Cats camping? That did not seem right, but if the wizard said so, it must be true. Very well, said the good knight. Carry on. But the cats didn't like camping. They didn't like it one bit. They jumped and bumped. They clawed and pawed, they cussed and fussed and hissed, and they would not even eat one toasted marshmallow. The good knight could not help but hear all the racket the cats were making. Something doesn't seem right, he thought. Back he rode to the wizard's house. Clippity clop. Follow me, good dragons, he said. Let us get to the bottom of this and bring those cats. Inside the wizard's house, the good knight found the wizard's note. It did not say to take the cats swimming. It did not say to put the cats in the cupboard or to take them camping. Didn't you read this note? he asked. The dragons hung their heads. Their eyes filled with drippy, droppy tears. We told him we would take care, but we don't know how to read, they confused. So the good knight read the note to the dragons. First they gave the cats water. Then they fed the cats food from the cupboard, and they put the cats in their bed to sleep. By then the dragons were very tired themselves. The good knight walked them back to their cave and tucked them in for the night. The next day, the wizard came back from his trip. He visited the dragons. Thank you so much. I mean, thank you for watching my cats, he said. You did such a good job. I wanted you to have this. He handed them a tiny baby kitten of their own. And I wanted you to have this, said the good knight. He handed a book to the dragons. It was a book about learning to read. The End. I don't want to make you read For the second book, is the goat who ate everything. And yes, this is the Happy Meal book I got at McDonald's back in 2012 when I was four. The goat who ate everything. Illustrated by Duck Studios. Written by John Montgomery. Art direction by Keith Hughes. Cover design by Remy Glock. I had a brother who was a kid. No joke, he was a goat. He was a billy goat catastrophe, a constant eating disastrophe. He ate mom's chair, he ate dad's hair. He ate the couch, he ate the whole house. He chomped my baseball glove with goatish delight. He ate a street lamp, I mean, he ate a street lamp and turned off the lights. He chewed flowers and plants and fire hydrants. 
We went on vacation and he ate all of France. Billy, you can't, shouted Sheriff Van Zandt, but Billy said, bah, and ate Van Zandt's pants. <laughs> that is funny. Bite you, chomp, munch, crunch, the town became Brother Billy Goat's lunch. Suddenly, Billy let out a roar boy. Bitch! Billy Goat had a, sc a stomach ache like no other. He turned green, blue, and every color. Whoa, he must have gotten sick. Like the very hungry caterpillar did for eating so much real food seven days a week. But let's get back to the story. Gurgle, gurgle, Billy was in an awful mood. Then Dad said, Billy, start eating better food. Try lean protein, low fat dairy, vegetables, whole grains, and fruit. Choose the good diet, and before too long, you could grow up to be big and strong. Now today, I'm proud to say, Brother Billy is feeling great. Although sometimes we remind him, eat your food, not the plate. The end. That is it for today's story time video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. And today's story time video, and... You've probably realized I'm not at home because I'm at my Papa Andrew's again, which he's at work right now. Bye, guys.